Hello everyone and welcome to another lecture in our clinical pharmacy course. Uh, today's lecture will be about aminoglycosides and their therapeutic drug monitoring. This is a very important lecture so you need to pay close attention, uh, have your paper and pen with you, you will be taking notes. Um, basically as a clinical pharmacist in clinical practice you are the only person who is capable of um, dosing and monitoring aminoglycosides. Now the dosing part, uh, doctors might get that from Lexicomp or from UpToDate. Uh, however, they won't really dig more into it to understand how to uh, perfectly dose an aminoglycoside because it's not straightforward dosing. You need to do some calculations before you can actually get the dose. And it's not just a milligram per kg uh, kind of a dose. Um, so they don't know all about that, but you do, or you should, and that's why uh, when you're there on the ward, they, they, they feel more uh, comfortable um, approaching you and, and telling you, hey, Joe, can you take care of this aminoglycoside for me? I want to start this patient on genomycin or whatever, and I, don't, I have no clue how to do it. And they will be very uh, honest with you. They don't know what they're doing, but they know that this patient needs uh, an aminoglycoside. On the other hand, some doctors might start aminoglycosides when it's not necessary or it's not really indicated. So you being there and you know how dangerous uh, these drugs could be um, or how their adverse effects are really bad, uh, you can immediately stop the drugs if they are inappropriate. So let's get started with today's lecture. We're going to go through um, a lot of things today. Uh, first, we're going to talk about the uh, common uh, uses of aminoglycosides, uh, the indications that we usually use them for. Uh, we'll talk about aminoglycosides toxicities and of course we will discuss uh, the dosing strategies of aminoglycosides because there are different dosing strategies. And finally we're going to touch on the pharmacokinetics and therapeutic drug monitoring for aminoglycosides. The common aminoglycosides that we see in practice are three of them, uh, genomycin, tobramycin, and amikacin. So we don't really combine aminoglycosides, you'll never see that, but you probably will see one or the other, one of these three, amikacin, tobramycin, or genomycin. Um, they have potent bactericidal uh, effects. Um, they have something called the concentration-dependent bacterial killing, so uh, the higher the peak of the drug in the blood, uh, the more the killing. They also have something called the uh, post-antibiotic uh, effect, which is basically a, a persistent suppression of the bacterial growth after uh, a brief exposure uh, uh, to the antibiotic, uh, even if the host defenses are absent, which is great. Um, effective mostly against aerobic uh, gram-negative bacteria, but we all know that. Uh, they have poor oral absorption. Again, we all know that. We, cannot, we don't have an oral uh, aminoglycoside to step down from IV to oral, for example. So they have to be injected. Uh, they are excreted in the kidneys. Yeah, we know that. Um, Usually, we don't use them as a first-line drug alone, and that's because of the resistance uh, uh, patterns. But uh, typically, we add them on other antibiotics, either for synergy or um, to cover certain bugs that uh, are affected or are susceptible to aminoglycosides. Finally, tobramycin has greater activity against pseudomonas. So, if you're in practice and a doctor sees a patient um, who has a, a urinary tract infection, for example, growing Pseudomonas aeruginosa, and it's uh, um, resistant to most drugs except genomycin uh, and tobramycin, and the doctor starts genomycin, you can easily tell the doctor, hey, tobramycin has higher or greater activity against pseudomonas and switch to tobramycin instead of genomycin. That's uh, just off note, you'll see that a lot in practice. Uh, genomycin is the, um, the easiest to remember maybe aminoglycosides that most doctors remember right away uh, and they don't think of tobramycin. But tobramycin, yes, has a higher activity against pseudomonas. The common uses in practice, um, 
serious gram-negative infections that are susceptible to genomycin and, or tobramycin or amikacin, uh, urinary tract infections, specifically the complicated ones, which uh, we usually need some IV antibiotic at first, uh, bloodstream infections, uh, intra-abdominal infections, endocarditis, mycobacterium infections, and neonatal uh, bloodstream infections.